I'm Nova M. Baimonti, and we are here at the New York City premiere of The Staircase. So I would love to know, what is one of the biggest challenges for this role, being that it's based on a true story, and how did you approach that character? Um, well, you know, how we approached it was, uh, you know, our, our director and our showrunners and, and our writers, you know, Maggie Cohen, Antonio Campos. You know, Antonio's been part of this project for over 10 years. I mean, he was in the original courtroom when the decision making was happening. So he's been tied to this. He has a, a, a bankroll of knowledge about the case and about the individuals, the family members. So I really look to him to, to help me with this. You know, he wanted us to each bring our own um, our own uh, parts of our character to to the character but at the same time he wanted to keep a lot of the, the truthfulness of it so you know we got videos we got stories we got um, tons of different you know just books and knowledge of of the case and of the family um, so it was really uh, it was really fun to kind of work with that and kind of use that as play-doh and, and play around with it the most um, scary part about it I mean was probably the first day working with someone like Colin Firth you know um, no pressure no pressure uh, I mean he was he was so nice so kind on and off set so helpful uh, created this family bond with me um, just like another father to me of, of just spending so much time hanging out with me off set and on set that it, it was it was just like a dream come true so did you feel any pressure being that it was a documentary and now it's a series? Well, no. well yes and no, right? But th this is this one, th you know, this miniseries is, is way different than the documentary. The documentary focuses on Michael Peterson and the case. The, the miniseries focuses on the family and what happens to a family before, during the trial, and then after. How does it tear them apart? How does the characters have an arc throughout that journey? Uh, what happens to certain individuals? Uh, so it's kind of a little bit of a different prong approach on this. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank Got it. Oh, thank you so much. I would love to talk about your fashion. Who are you wearing? Uh, Givenchy. Oh, okay. Very lovely. Casual. A little casual Givenchy. <laughs> what was your approach in regards to being that this was based on a true story and the type of research and process that went into creating your role? Um, well, in terms of the acting process, I don't think that the approach was much different. I think that, you know, at the end of the day, there was still a script and you were still, you know, in front of a camera and you just happen to have more research material than you otherwise might get. Um, and also, you know, I think it was just helpful to be reminded of the real life implications of the story, which is something that is unique, is that whether we like it or not, this show is becoming part of the canon of the Peterson story. Um, and that's, a, you know, it's an interesting thing to remember when you're on set. And what would you say as an actress was your greatest challenge and then also maybe the greatest surprise? Um, I mean, a challenge definitely to feel a sense of, you know, freedom or liberation within the confines of the, like, the real character. The idea that, you know, my instinct, like, I, I, I questioned my instincts a bit more because it wasn't just coming from me. It was, you know... I'm, uh, I'm actually responsible for portraying a real person. Sorry, I touched your cord. Um, and that, yeah, that was a challenge, for sure, yeah. How are you feeling about this premiere this evening? I'm hilariously nervous, um, because, you know, you can't really do anything about a movie, but, um, but also because I've seen the first couple episodes and I actually am kind of proud of it and really love... I know this sounds like the junk people say on red carpets, <laughs> But, but I'm, I'm, I'm so moved by the work that all of my fellow actors are doing on this thing. Um, I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah. And how did you prepare in your role? I've been acting. Have anybody watched the documentary itself? Have you been doing research? We see a lot of court TV is being watched. Yeah. So what was your take on that? Well, the biggest thing I did was I played Bill Peterson, who's Colin Firth's brother, and I got in touch with Bill. and. We, we talked a lot, um, and then I watched the documentary, and there are, as you probably know, books and podcasts, and, you know, so kind of ground through those things. But I think talking to Bill was actually uh, the best thing I did. What did you mostly get out of that conversation, if there's maybe one quote that's most important? So, I won't quote him, because I, I feel like it's... But I think that when you play a real person, you have to honor that human being and there's something about meeting a person where you go this really is a real person you really have to be honorable in your portrayal and do the best you can and so that was great um it was interesting 
he just clearly loves his brother. He, and, uh, you know, that that's... I think this is a, a love story, fundamentally. People keep saying it's a true crime thing, but I think it's a love story about a family under stress. How's it going this evening? Yeah, I'm good. Good, good. 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 What are you most excited about for this premiere? Well, I'm so excited, you know, to know you, what guys you're going to think about it, you know. I think, like, I saw some of it, but I can't wait to have, like, the urgent feedback about it. What was your research process like? What was your process like as an actor? Do you do method acting? Did you do a lot of research? How did you take on this? Well, I'll do a mix of everything. But the thing's like, what I was... I, I'm a big fan of the documentary. So I knew the case already, you know? But the thing's like, what I was looking... I was pretty lucky because the actual um, director of the documentary was so generous with me. It gave me so much information about what happened and how he felt. So I had like solid, you know, information, you know, to work on my character. And Antonio was amazing, so he directed me and he told me very, very precisely what he wanted from me. Can you give some of that information away of his notes? Well, um, his notes from, from Antonio's? Yeah, because the thing, I remember like Antonio, I was like, how close do you want me to be from the actual director? And he will always answer by your question. You see, what do you think of it? I'm like, uh, maybe 75% close. He's like, what about 74? <laughs> you know? No, that was great. That was great. That's amazing that he let you have those kind of actor choices and risks. Amazing. And what do you hope that the audience takes away from this true crime story? Well, I think that the, the, the major thing is that drama allows us to spend time with Kathleen Peterson. True crime fans are, you know, obsessed about if Michael Peterson did it or didn't do it, right? But what about, what about Kathleen? So, and the show helps us to understand who she was and the impact that she had, you know, on, on, on the family. And I think this is very important because when we talk about true crime, there is a crime and there is a victim, you know? So, yeah, I think that it humanizes her and I'm so proud to have been part of this, you know, amazing, amazing project. Yeah. So happy for you and we're looking forward to it. It's thank gonna you. be drama filled, so thank you. Thank you. So I love your outfit. Let's thank start you. off with that. Who is this? Um this is my uh this is Mark Sorensen. He's uh he set me up. You know, I'm not I'm not really one to know how to put things together very well. So uh, I know my deficiency, so I seek out those who are efficient in that area. Nothing wrong. That's efficient, too. If you know, then you can, or you know, intuitive. Uh, so I would love to know, what was your approach to this role, and how did you do your research in getting into this role? Honestly, the research started before I ever got the audition because I was a fan of the documentary first, um, and then I got the audition and thought, why are they even auditioning me? I'm not getting, like, what this is. This role, this role to me was... A, a role that it, honestly was a dream role to me. Um, to Congratulations! Play, thank you, thank you. To play such a character was, you know, it was such an honor. But um, once I got the role, I mean, it was I was off to the races. It, I watched the documentary. I made my wife watch it with me, which of course she loved it. But um, there was a lot of research, and it was, you know, a, a lot of the avenues you go down, it's just a dead end, you know, and so it's. It's tough, so you, you try to go at it from every angle just to see you know what you can glean from all the information. And there's such conflicting information out there everywhere, so at the end of the day, it's just about making a choice and trying to do the best you can. It's hard, though, to play somebody who's still alive, like a real person who's still alive. is. I've played people that are long deceased back hundreds of years ago, but never have I done, have I portrayed somebody who's still alive, which to me is... It's a, it's a challenge for on many different levels just because I know it's a real person with a real family um, and there's a lot of information out there, a lot of bad information that paints this person to be a horrible person. Um, so for me, it was, it, it, it was important to me to do my best to play not what the media is saying necessarily, but what I found to be the truth. Um, and uh, so that... Yeah, I mean, it's a challenge. It is. It's. It's tough because I know family members and this person in particular are going to be out there watching it, and I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to be flippant about what I do. So there's. It's. It's an interesting. Um, it was an interesting lesson as an actor to do this. That's amazing. Congratulations! Since you said this was your dream role, and and we so look forward to seeing it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>
So let me know, as an actor, what draws you to true crime stories? Well, true crime, I'm, it doesn't get any better, right? Very interesting. Very, I, I mean, they say what, uh, hold on, I feel like I should do that for you. Um, that the truth is stranger than fiction and nothing is stranger than this story. I, I, I couldn't believe it as I was watching the documentary, which I hadn't even seen when I got cast. I was not familiar with the details of the story and as it unfolded, it, it blew my mind how complicated it was that if, if, if a screenwriter had just pinned this out of their imagination, we would think that it was beyond belief. But the fact that it was cold from actual events tells you how, how strange real life really is. And being that it is based on a true story, what kind of research did you do? Did you watch any interviews from the courtroom? Did you actually end up watching the documentary and then taking notes? What was your approach to acting for this role? Of course, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I had to watch the documentary. And uh, a lot of people don't know this, but, you know, Court TV, which was, I mean, in the early 2000s, post the OJ trial, people were obsessed with courtroom dramas and we could watch it live on television in real time. So Court TV actually has the whole trial. You don't even have to watch the documentary. You can watch the every single uh, dep deposition or interview that happens on, on, uh, in the room. And so, yeah, I did a lot of that. Uh, but also at the end of the day, you know, I had to cull into the imagination of, of, of what I could pull as an actor to really understand what it would be like to to be in this high profile, all eyes on you sort of drama where the public is against you. They believe that he is guilty, right? So what I had to do as one of his uh, you know, defense attorneys was really, was really ask myself those questions. How could I truthfully uh, you know, defend someone? And what you're really doing is defending the system to make sure that it holds up and, and th there aren't abuses within the system. Um, and as somebody named Justice, like, I mean, I really had to pay attention and do it right, you know? Yes, it goes hand in hand. And what do you hope that the audience takes away from this true crime? I love the audience. I, well, here, here, here's what I'll say. There's, this show is so ready for an audience right now because it, it what we're seeing across, not just in this country, but across the world is we're not trying, we're, we're not trying cases in the courtroom anymore. It's really in the public persona, right? It's what we all feel if someone is guilty or someone is innocent. And so much of that is driven by who tells the best story and how it's edited and how, what, what you come into it believing. So how in the beautiful writing that uh, Anthony, and Maggie did through this uh, through this series is is really going to uh, articulate that for the public in an interesting way and get them to start to ask the the right kind of questions which is maybe truth isn't as simple as it appears to be hey how are you doing this evening how are you good, good. excellent I would love to know it's premiere evening what are you most excited about um, I'm, I'm excited to see how this um, first episode turned out you know you're in it, and you and you don't know till you, till you see it what uh, what happens, uh, how it's all ultimately put together. And, and I'm excited about being with all these people that I got to spend months with uh, in the making of this. Just uh, we like real real bonds and friendships were made during the making of this, and it was a so special project. A lot of hanging out off of set. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great to hear. Yeah. I would love to know, as an actor, did you watch the actual documentary? Did you take some notes and kind of research off of that? Or what was your process like when coming to this role? I did watch the documentary. And um, I watched hours of Court TV. Of, uh, of all, like, I mean, you can go to Court TV and watch every minute of, of, of the case. Um, and and, uh, and, and reading, you know, reading up on it, um, podcasts. Uh, yeah, I, I really dove in, and then once I got to Atlanta and um, got and met up with Parker Posey, who uh, who I, I I just feel so fortunate that she was my 
partner in this. I mean, she plays Freda Black, who's the assistant prosecutor, and felt like we were like long lost siblings or something. Uh, I've been a big fan of her for my life. Um, and then to, to meet her, and she's just so wonderful and as talented as you know she is. But uh, she, um, she facilitated a conversation with Jim Harden, who I play, and uh, we, we had a Zoom call with him for almost two hours, and he, uh, he shed light on who he was and on his perspective of the case, and, that, that, and that's, that's the core of what was important to me, um, because that's who I'm playing, and, I, and that's, you don't need much else. Um, and of, of the relationship between him and Freda and how he felt about the defense team and other things, his, uh, his, his upbringing. Um, so talking to him, talking to uh, Candy, who was a member of the DA's office that, that uh, Parker also got in touch with. We got to talk to Candy and she shed light about um, Jim and Freda's relationship and, um, and the case at large. That, all, all of that was invaluable. Talking to the, really talking to Jim, talking to Candy, and the collaboration with uh, Parker was uh, so vital to this. And, and, and Antonio was brilliant. And, and, and everything that Antonio gave us was, was just uh, supportive, just so supportive and brilliant. Yeah. So looking forward to it. Seems like such a cliffhanger, especially since it's based on a true story. So, yeah, and you know, based on a true story that uh, cases like this, you, there's no one knows but the people that were there. And so, all you have are, are these. You know, there's the, there's a truth, and then there's everyone's subjective truth around it, and. Uh, <laughs> And we stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you so much and congratulations. We look forward to it. Thank you so much. You. Appreciate it. What are you doing this evening? How are you? So medical examiner Deborah Rada, she was the chief medical examiner on the case. So you had a lot to do with the autopsy and what they actually discovered and how that kind of switched up the lens of the story, whether he's guilty or not. What was kind of your take of that playing almost a real character and based on true stories? Well, I do believe that Dr. Radish had a lot of integrity as a scientist and that to the best of her ability, she was looking at the science and making um, her statements from the perspective of a doctor and, and a scientist. And I spoke to a lot of medical examiners while I was doing it. And, and I'm, this is not to say that I know that, that whether or not in the, at the end of the day, um, they came up with the right verdict, but it is to say that I really do stand behind everything that, that she concluded, and, and I stand behind her as a scientist. Yeah. It's a different kind of take on it, being that that sort of discovery switched up everything. Well, <laughs> the series will go into it, and I don't want to give too much away, but I did bring the autopsy. The autopsy report is public knowledge. You can download that, and, and I, so I shared it with a few different forensic pathologists, a professor of forensic pathology, um, someone who's practicing in Australia, and, you know, they said, look, you make, you make your best guess with the information that you have, and what they looked at and what I what they shared with me was very close to with what Deborah Radish came away with. So whether or not we can ever truly know is is what the staircase the, the series will will bring to light. But I do think she was doing her best to be a scientist. I really think she had a lot of integrity. And I also <laughs> think that um, studying forensic pathology gave me a ton of respect for just like the the profession of trying to go back like an archaeologist and look at clues in the human body for what could possibly have happened that we'll never really know. That's such an interesting career. That's so fascinating. Yeah, I, want, I know. I don't think I have the courage to actually do that career, but I got glad I got to speak to a few of them. That's awesome. <laughs> and what do you hope that the audience takes away from this true crime story? Well, actually, that truth is such a slippery and subjective thing that... Um, it's so frustrating not to know. We want to know. We want answers. We want things to be black and white. And I think this series will show you that there's so much gray area. There, yeah. Thank you so much. We look forward to it. Thank you. Like my last premiere was 
two years ago and it was basically on a Zoom. So this is kind of like sort of learning how to get getting back on the bike or whatever. I would love to know, did you feel any pressure as a creator being that there was a documentary and now it's actually a mini-series or a longer series? I mean, also as someone who loved the documentary so much and who has such great respect for Jean-Xavier de Lestrade and Denis Ponce and everybody that made it, I, you know, I, I had... Um, I had to, you know, stand on it on on my own, and I had to stand on its own. But we also had to stand next to this great piece of work. So, you know, we were aware of it, but we felt like our story was its own thing, and that it it existed without the documentary. And the fact that they both exist is a great thing if you want to go deep into this. But you can watch one without watching the other. As a creator, what was your note to the actors, being that this is based on a true story? What was your vision for that? It's we're never going to try and impersonate anybody. It's always about trying to see where you and this person connect, intersect, and not going beyond that point. Let's not force something if it doesn't look or feel right. And that's how we did it. We were always just kind of trying to... Again, it was also in the casting. We weren't looking for people that looked like carbon copies of anybody. It was who just felt like the right person for that role, and that was it. And what would you say that you would like for the audience to take away from this besides the documentary, being that this exists on its own as a series? Um, I think that the, the family's experience and the family experience in, in something like this is something that we go deep into. And I think it, it will um, be illuminating for people who don't know it and, and also be very kind of, in some ways, uh, I think relatable, sort of a, for anybody who's gone through a family tragedy. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, if you come in with a question of did he or didn't he do it, I think you're going to leave with a lot deeper questions than that. And, um, and hopefully at the end, you're going to be okay with the gray.